Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome to the channel. I've been making a ton of doors recently for all the cabinetry in our new edition, so I wanted to make a video specifically about how I make these shaker style doors. So I'm going to show you the process of making these shaker style doors using the Copen stick or Raylan style construction. I'm going to be making them exclusively on the router table and as you can see behind me here and on the table you can easily customize them to any size that you need. Shaker style doors are made up of the Copen stick or Raylan style construction. You can make these on the table saw or you can make them on the router. I am choosing to make them on the router as I believe I have a little bit better dust collection on the router table. These doors are made up of three distinct components consisting of five parts. You have two rails, two styles, and a middle panel. The rails and the styles will all have this groove to accept the panel. I don't have it in the rail yet, but it will go right there. And in my case, I am using quarter inch maple plywood as the panel. The panel does not get glued into the frame as you want it to be able to expand and contract. So make sure you make this panel smaller than the final dimension of your inside groove. The rails will have a tongue as shown here. And in my case, with the router bit that I am using, this is a 3 8 of an inch tongue. And you need to keep that in mind as you're making your final dimension of your doors. I'm going to be using solid poplar as my rail and style medium. And I want this to be 3 quarters of an inch. So we'll start by breaking down that rough stock to rough length and then getting it milled down to three quarters of an inch and then cutting it to just over the two inch width that I want and I say just over so that I can run it on edge through my drum sander so I don't have to sand both of these edges by hand. After a lot of time at the miter station breaking everything down to their rough length, it was time to move over to the jointer to get everything down to that 3 quarters of an inch that I was after. Most of these boards were a pretty consistent 15 16 of an inch, so one pass through the planer I was able to get them down to the, my 3 quarters of an inch. Once everything was my three quarters of an inch I was after, it was time to move over to the jointer, flip one of those flat sides up against the jointer fence, and get a nice square edge to run against the table saw fence. And at the table saw, I cut everything down to a little bit proud of two inches. I am using a ripping blade from Tools Today, and this is a 30 tooth dedicated ripping blade, and by golly does it leave a perfect edge. This is one of the first projects that I've used a dedicated ripping blade on, and I will say this actually makes the table saw seem much more powerful. I have a 1.5 horsepower table saw, and sometimes it seems a little bit underpowered, but I gotta say, with this dedicated ripping blade, you get a perfectly cut edge, and your table saw seems a little bit more powerful. I specifically got this drum sander for my shop knowing that I was going to have so many of these doors to make. I never really thought I would do edge sanding with this, but boy was I wrong. There is nothing more magical than sending 10 pieces up on edge and getting them sanded so you never have to touch them again with a hand sander. The drum sander makes quick work of this. And now it is time to move over to the router table to cut those grooves in the side of all of the boards that we are going to use for our shaker style doors. I am using an Amana router bit kit to make these grooves and this is actually an adjustable router bit so you can have different size panels in your doors. Super cool. I also like to add a little piece of tape on the router height adjustment just to make sure nothing moves. I have learned the hard way. And groove after groove after groove. I will say you probably don't need such an extravagant featherboard setup, but this is safe because it will prevent any kickback and from running off of the router bit as you're running your boards through. And before changing your bit and cutting the tongues on all of the rails, you need to make sure you have the proper length. It is back to the miter saw with a stop block to cut all of my pieces down for my various doors. And then it is back over to the router table to change that bit over to cut those tongues. And I'm actually using this sled from Rockler Woodworking and Hardware that will hold my pieces parallel and keep me safe as I'm running through cutting all of these tongues. When you flip your rail over to cut the tongue on the opposite side, make sure you keep the same face down. This will prevent any skewing when you're assembling your doors later on. 
And now for all the panels. Like I said, I am using quarter inch maple plywood and I broke this down on the table saw and then cut it down to their final length on the miter saw. You don't have to use maple plywood here. You could probably use a hard board to try to save a few bucks, but I wanted everything to have a consistent grain. And once all your panels are cut down to their final length, it is time for assembly. I used a sanding block to make sure I had no splinters in the way that would prevent a tight clamp. And here you can see I am checking for the alignment. This is where routing that tongue with the same face down is important. Apply glue to the tongue and the shoulder and we are ready to insert our panel. Throw your door into some clamps and then use a quick diagonal measurement using your tape measure to make sure you are square. Did I mention how much I love this drum sander? Now we're going to make sure all of the rails and styles are perfectly flat with each other by running them through the drum sander and eliminating all of the hand sanding that I used to have to do when making these doors. This is a 1632 Supermax, and as you can see here, I'm actually hanging the door off of one side because it's a little bit wider than the width of the belt. I can run it through one side, flip it over, and make it perfectly parallel by running it on the opposite edge. And that's it. That is the process that I run through for making shaker style doors. Now, it is good to put a finish on, and in my case for these 50 something odd doors that I've made recently, I have been using Sherwin Williams Chem Aqua Plus Surfacer and Chem Aqua Plus Lacquer for the top coat, and I have sprayed it all using my Fuji Q5 Platinum. As you can see here, I actually got myself a pressure pot, and this eliminates the need for having to have the one quart can on the gun itself. This makes it much lighter, has a much larger capacity so you don't have to stop and fill it, and overall a lot more fun to use and very handy because you can spray in any direction now. And here you can see I'm using a bunch of my past projects, the Harbor Freight hack stool that spins, and my foldable rolling, rolling rack. Well there you are folks, I hope you enjoyed that video and I certainly hope it helps some of you out that are looking to make some custom doors for your home. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up button, helps us out a ton and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler and you have a good one.